How's it going guys? So I've actually just randomly decided to record this video because I'm out in the trenches at the moment so I'm just currently you know building up a blog post and I really wanted to give you an idea and an insight as to how I write blog posts. So I've actually just found a keyword that I wanted to target. Now I do usually do my keyword research on the weekends but every so often I take a look back into my tool and if I find that I actually see a keyword that's worth targeting and it requires my immediate attention, then I may potentially bring that to the forefront. So the keyword I'm going for today is actually undercoat, undercoat rake for golden retrievers. So what I also uh, also note down is that how many uh, search, sorry, how much content I need to be uh, writing to outrank the top 10 rank, top 10 ranking pages on page one of Google. So my tool actually gives me all of this information. So it tells me, you know, um, this is the keyword. And then once I plug that keyword in here, I highlight that in red. And then I, it shows me how much content I need to have in order to, you know, outnumber the amount of length um, that the content of the top 10 ranking pages have. So it works out an average on that. I've also noted down anything that I want to include as well. So I want to include a YouTube video. I do usually have quite a few images inside of my content, but I really want to have a YouTube video inside of this as well, because I couldn't see that in any of the top 10 ranking posts. So that will give me a little bit of an edge. Okay, so first things first, when I actually come in here, I do use Google Docs because it's really easy you always want something like this because when I make a change just like that, you'll see it saving automatically just up here every single time. So there's no way of possibly losing your work. So that's why it's really important. I do it here and it allows me to solely focus on just getting the content out. And then after I'll transfer it onto WordPress onto my back end of a post of where I'll add images and all of the other kind of uh, videos and all of the other types of media. So the first things first is just writing the content. Now, the whole idea of writing a blog post is to get your viewer to go down like a si slippery slope, as you may call it. So the idea is you wanna captivate them right at the beginning and also let them know that you've got the answer to whatever it is that they're trying to get the answer to in that sense. So I've basically explained a problem that I know they're probably experiencing. So anyone who's looking for an undercoat rake for a golden retriever, one, this search query says to me that they're kind of unsure exactly what it is because they haven't typed in best undercoat because then they'll be looking for an immediate kind of uh, buy. So they'll be looking for how can I buy this? Now, best undercoat rake for golden retrievers was a little bit more competitive, but didn't have as much search volume. So what I would like to do is I'm actually going to still include that. But the main keyword I'll be targeting is this. So if I do get that as a secondary ranking, then so be it, I'll be happy for that. So what I'm actually doing is here, I've explained the problem that I know they're probably experiencing, which is why the reason that they're actually looking for this. So if you can explain their problem in depth, they're probably going to feel that you have a solution because I always use the comparison. It's like if you go to a doctor and you say, I've got a back pain and then they tell you, oh, well, that's linked to your vertebrae of where it links to your rib cage. And I've seen this happen on many occasions, X, Y, Z. And then they explain to you that, does it hurt particularly when you're sleeping? You're like, oh my God, this guy knows everything. Yes, it exactly hurts at that point. Immediately, if you do get that type of information from a doctor, you'll put them right in the top rankings of your doctors and be like oh this guy's really good immediately you would feel that he has some type of solution and you would trust him so it doesn't matter about whether you're on authority or not is the one thing that anyone's looking for in this world in business or in life is simply for you to solve their problem so if you were to go to the doctor say for example and you said i've got a back pain and the guy just said oh yeah i've seen it before here's uh, um, uh here's some tablets for that back pain you're just going to be like, what? This guy doesn't even have a clue what he's talking about. So it's really important for you to actually explain problems in depth. So then your reader will assume that you have a solution. OK, so I've actually explained it talking about, you know, hair tangled, hair getting absolutely everywhere, which is why they would probably be looking for this. 
and then I've made it a bit into a humorous entry and then if I didn't know any better it would sound like you need an undercoat rig for golden retrievers so that's exactly what we're going to discuss so this is like a continuation line so I'm telling them it sounds like you need this it's already kind of rhetorical we know that they need it and then I'm going to go into this to actually continue on now I know I need to target 2,000 200 words on average so the way I actually do that is by first of all setting out all of the different subheadings that I'm going to be using so if you use this actual uh, tool here online Google Docs you'll be able to press uh, shift command C on a Mac or control command uh, com control shift C on a desktop um, windows and then we can see like how many words so you can see 76 words out of 232 which is the whole blog post so that's counting all of that other stuff now all I need right now is I need 200 per subheading so if I were to say 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 I need one more so there's one more that I'll be needing to include there but this is the way I actually do it so if I haven't got all of them, I'm not really fussed anyway. I could add one in. If I can't think of one, it doesn't matter. It's not going to stop me from writing my content at the moment because some of them may become longer and then you'll be able to insert a subheading in between like some text and split it up and break it up into two sections. So the way I actually go about this is I basically ask myself the questions of if someone was looking for undercoat rake for golden retriever, they're going to have a few questions like what is the best rake? You know where can they find it what does it do what is an undercoat rake in the first place how do you use one all of these different questions so the three w's you know like what when and where or how if whatever all of those type of question words you need to be including so i've got what is an undercoat rake why can't you just use a brush because some of them might think why do i need this thing you know i could probably just use a brush and do the same job so i need to explain to them why they can't do that what is the best rake so they're going to want to know what the best one is or what i feel is the best on the market and then what to look for when purchasing so these are the different things you need to look for within your purchase why is it important to take care of your golden's coat so now i've run out of subheading so sometimes i get a bit stuck if you do, you can go to other posts and look for some inspiration. So what I did is I just went over here. I looked at the top ranking pages. I don't ideally always go for the zero one, but I'll go for that, you know, two or three position. I click this and I just had a brief look in to see what they're doing, you know, and how they're breaking it down because they're number two. So it gives me like what to look for in a dog brush. So I saw that, you know, all of these guys were not specifically talking about rakes, which was great. There's no one targeting that. And um, so none of them are, you know, fully answering it and providing the best user um, experience or not user experience, but not solving the user's problem the best. And that's what this post will do. It will be very specific and tailored to that. So I've seen here is like what's important to take care of your golden coat. So I um that was not that one i came down here and it was somewhere up here let's have a look yeah so so it was this why brushing your golden is so important i just uh, put it into my own words why it's important to take care of your golden's coat so you know i've worded it in my own way and i've come at it from a different angle and i've tailored it in and tied it into my subject and topic that i'm actually discussing in this post and then you know how to use an undercoat rake that was also something that i found here because they explained how to use it which made me think you know what you need to include that so um what is it what to look for so that was what to look for in a dog brush and then i've got uh let's have a look uh yes yeah, so, because i had it what to look for when purchasing an undercoat rake so i've put that again into my own words but it's a question that people will have so they're using it for brushes i'm going to tailor that for rakes inside of my post and then i can see obviously all the recommended ones that they're using which are going to be amazon affiliate links i'm betting i haven't clicked them but yeah predictable okay so i can see the idea of where they're coming from 
the other good thing about this uh, specific keyword is that I know that there are affiliate sites that are ranking in the top 10 in Google for this. So that means Google are very comfortable with ranking affiliate websites for these specific keywords. Now, no one's specifically uh, targeting this word, so I know I can. And then the next thing I'm going to do, so once I've actually told them to continue on reading, I'm going to, you know, sort of lengthen this uh, little bit of this the post here so the next part I'm going to talk about is exactly what I aim to cover inside of this post um, so I've actually given them like the clear instruction to continue now I'm going to explain why they should continue okay so that's what I would do here and then for the rest of this post all I'm going to do is just fill in blanks so all I need is 200 words there 200 words there 200 words there 200 there and this is exactly the same process now this was something I took from that other site I'm just using that for inspiration I'm going to basically delete that but um, all I'll do is just basically come here and then just you know use it as an inspiration to actually get an idea of what I'm talking about so I've tied it to a different kind of subheading than what they used it for but I found that it was quite relevant and it really explained what I'm trying to get across under this subheading in depth so I would like to you know rephrase that put it into my own words and just get a general idea of what they're doing from here now I don't um, support copying or anything like that this is completely different all it is is I'm just getting a brief idea of exactly what's working and then tailoring it into the topic that I'm covering so lastly what I would do is just come up once I've got all of this content and then I would just use the voice typing so that's what I would do for the rest of this post so once I've typed out this by hand the rest of the post is all going to be in voice type so I might actually you know continue typing here but then the rest will be voice typing so I'll give you an example of what I do and this is a real post that I'm actually targeting a real keyword that I'm doing today so I thought I'd just give you an over the shoulder kind of view so remember what we're trying to do is get them down this slippery slope so imagine this like a slide and what it is is you want to get them in once you got them in on, on the slide you want to then slide them down all of your content so they continue to read and then you also want to cover for people who skim and skip and whatever else so using bullet points uh, is really good and a lot of media so things like images that can define exactly what the topic's about okay so what we're going to talk about here is so exactly what we're going to dis so I'm saying that's exactly what I'm going to discuss is about undercoat rakes so I'm going to say um, when attempting when no so I'm going to use very basic grammar set out I always try and simplify everything to buy an undercoat rake it is important for you to first understand thoroughly what they do without knowing what rake to purchase you could wind up with a load of items or tools that leave you back in square one lucky for you I have yeah um, trust me I would know as I've been through it all but lucky for you I have done all the hard work and put everything together for you right here in this post keep reading as we I am about to answer all of those important questions that you may have 
dot 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 I like that a lot because it carries on as well so hold that thought and we will get straight into it okay don't worry about correcting all of your spelling errors and all of that stuff as well don't even worry about checking your content but I am going to do it for you know um, not checking your content I mean like checking the amount of content you've written so if it's something that's way off and you're like kind of like what the hell does that even mean like for example this it doesn't even look like a word so I might correct that and correct that now I'm using Grammarly on this so that's that plug in there it's currently in beta in using it for Google Docs and you can set it to whatever country that you're actually writing in so although I'm based in the UK I'm writing in American so it uses all the American terms so I set it to American you can set it to Australian Canadian so on and so forth okay so I'm just gonna continue that and that's that so I understand what that is and then for this purposes of the video I'm gonna do control sorry command shift C again and you can see that's already 180 words so that's enough for me I don't need to have it at 200 if I can't you know so um, like that's it that's good enough for me and I, I don't really like saying we so much so um, you know so let's see so I could say so hold that thought as you're about to get all the info you need uh, uh, as I will cover everything top to bottom that's it done so the next part is I'm basically now the good thing about once you've got your subheading set out is you've already uh, basically what it is is you, when you're focusing on subheadings only you basically focus on that so your mind gets into that mode and it starts producing that so then you can go out look for them in other posts and whatever else and you get that done once that's done you move on to your content so now I'm in the content first parts first and that's writing by hand um, it's a good practice that I have to write by hand at the beginning so you can really get in detail of exactly what you're going to be covering and then the rest is going to be that slippery slope that you take them down almost like a conversation of you explaining different things now the idea why I like this is because in my head mentally this is almost like non-existent whilst I'm covering that so the next section for me is just oh let's write a quick 200 words on what an undercoat rake is how easy is that so if you don't even know what it is the idea is is that you can actually basically uh, just google it so you could google it now you might say oh but it's on Google already now yes it is on Google but you have to think for a person who's come to your post about this about an undercoat rake they might not be able to find that information they would have to search for this search for that search for that search for that to answer all of those questions so the idea of your post although that you're pulling things from different parts of the internet you're compiling it into one easy to understand post so you're providing that to them as a resource that they can come to and get all of the information they need to first of all understand what this does know how to use it and then purchase the best one on the market so that's the idea and the problem that you're solving inside of this post okay so the next thing's next and that's like I said you'll just basically figure out what an undercoat rake is so you could simply you know uh, go on to anywhere on here and just check out what an undercoat rake is so this is like an Amazon I shouldn't have even clicked that so let's have a look undercoat rake dog brush yeah so something like this okay this is selling it again so I don't I'm not looking for a product this looks like a product again I'm not looking for a product I'm just looking for what an undercoat rake is okay so uh, let's have a look so really and truly you can just describe it that this is it this is what it is you know so you could just basically put that into your own words so what I'm gonna do is use the voice typer and I'll give you an example okay as you may know there are two main coats that a golden retriever has full stop they first have their guard coat which is the outer coat 
and then they have the inner coat which totals to a double coat for this kind of breed. It's super important for you to have an undercoat rate that can specifically target the undercoat here and really help to untangle those hairs or demat it as it becomes very spaghetti-like over time. An undercoat rake has a specific purpose to target the hair underneath. So it is built with at least a two inch length. Okay, before you make any statements like that, you really want to make sure that it has that kind of length. So I did see something about two inches across the internet when I was doing some research. But um, just say, for example, um, so it removes dead and loose fur from the undercoat. It's extra wise to ensure large areas of the dog's coat are completed quickly. OK, so I'm not going to make any facts. So you don't want to, you know, state facts if you don't know them for certain. So it's built with a uh, a very wide. So sometimes I brush it up a bit, like with typing. Um, a very wide, uh, what is it, a very wide, it's like a head, yeah, very wide head to ensure you can cover large areas of your dog's coat quickly. Whilst you may have brushes that can target the outer coat, it is highly important that you also have an undercoat rake that is built to target dead and loose hairs. So things like that you want to really, you know, fix because that you might miss that in future and it doesn't look like a spelling mistake because it didn't even come up. So this is the way, I, as you can see, look, we've written like how much content here? 142 words, come on, like this is super quick. I'm gonna take you all the way up to 200 right now, yeah? Um, so those loose hairs. Or I'm not sure what that was meant to be, or debris maybe. Okay, and when I use spaghetti, like it's using the hair, like all tangled up, you know, so it, it ties it back into uh, a bit of humor. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, we're just basically going to continue up to this amount of words. So I need that all together because on WordPress, it, you know, needs it like that. So I'm going to have that together. You sometimes want to just press enter. So this is writing for SEO in that sense. You want to do like on Google Docs, like two lines here, depending on your theme, though. So that will vary depending on your theme. Um, also, guys, you know, try and avoid notifications. That is the only notification that I enable um, when I'm working. I don't have multiple tabs open because it can just distract you. So no more than like three or four tabs at once. And um, yeah, otherwise you're distracted and you're not focused. OK, so this uh, post i've had enough of that don't need any more so as you may know and then i've explained um it's built to target dead and loose hairs so i'm really you know expanding on this and uh, it's essentially for heavy coat breeds um the rake is especially okay so if you find that your so if you find that so Sorry, guys, as well. What I do is I also hold my finger above like the backspace, you know, to delete and the space bar I use on my palm. So that way I can quickly edit a word like and take it back and then continue on talking. OK, and then use esc like escape to get out of the uh, voice typer because you can be talking and it will continue typing in that sense. So your golden is molting and losing lots of hair, then this will be the ideal tool for you to use. In appearance, an undercoat rake will have a big hefty looking grip with sharp looking pins 
that is built to penetrate your dog's outer coat and target those undercoat hairs. At the end of each of those sharp looking pins, you will find rounded edges, which can be quite soothing for your dog whilst cleaning them at the same time. This is what makes an undercoat rake ideal for most golden retrievers as they have that thick, dense fur coat. Now, some of you may be wondering why you can't just use the brush. So that's exactly what we're gonna discuss in the next section. Can you see that guys? So I've actually done over 200, I know it is. So I'm actually gonna highlight that. So it's Command Shift C and you can see 273. So I've gone over by a whole 73 words. So that's like, you know, so far we've got like on this, so we've really covered all of this quickly, 460 words. So, you know, we're going for 2000. We're like, you know, a quarter of a way there already, 25% within the space of like 15 minutes or 10 minutes. So you can really, really get a lot of content out like this. I hope this was helpful for you. And I'm going to get back to writing now.